Hey, what's going on, family, and welcome to the Rise to It podcast, your home for personal and professional development. My name is Jonathan Hernandez, a.k.a. the letter H, and with us today, we got our boys, Mr. Andre Covington. We got Mr. G.J. Sal Cortez, but we're also going to get right to our special guest. We got Kopi Soderopoulos joining us today. We got to give him a, a ring. We got to give him a ring right here. Please, 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 please. Go, keep, keep a little more. Oh, there, there we go. go. There you go. The legend. The legend. The legend. Cut. That's enough. The one and only. Oh, my gosh. Kopi is Checks the only the person. Kopi is the only person that I know that goes by one name, just the first name, and everyone knows who you're talking about, especially in Central California. But Kopi, first and foremost, thank you so much for joining us today on the Rise to a Podcast. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's really an honor. I, I really appreciate it. You know, it's just... Uh, the coverage you have and what you do in the community and to come and be with all of you and just talk about what's happening in our community and just about a little bit of, of each of us, you know, what we do. Absolutely. And Kopi, I know you've had a journey, right? I know you've um, been all over the country. I know you've tried the acting. We'll get into that in just yeah. a bit. But what brought you to Fresno, Central California, particularly um, way back when? And then now you're here, you made it a home and sure. now you have family that's here. Yeah. What brought you to Fresno? Well, uh, I was born in Greece. Uh, in, in 1948, September 12th, l- l- small gift will be fine. Don't worry, that doesn't have to be. <laughs> um, and then um, in 1951, uh, my dad had a sister and her husband that lived in Fresno, and uh, they brought us over after the Greek Civil War as displaced persons. So they brought us directly to Fresno. So that's how we ended up here. And uh, so we ended up in Fresno, and uh, my uncle worked for Southern Pacific for many years a section foreman, got a, da- a job for my dad uh, on the railroad so as, a, as a laborer, you know, pick and shovel, uh, because you just, they had to have a job. So that was it. And that's what he did. My mom worked in the laundry, the old St. Agnes out on Fruit Avenue, the old one. And uh, that's how we ended up in Fresno and stayed. And, and then my brother, actually, when we were coming over, my brother, Pete, uh, he's now deceased, um, he was he was in the oven, so to speak, mm, coming yeah. over on the boat. So um, so he was born. We came in December, I think, a couple uh, almost Christmas Eve, if I'm not mistaken. And then my brother was born in July, and and we all grew up here and lived here, and uh, then went to college and stuff and did things. But yeah. that's how we ended up and and grew up in Fresno, Fremont Elementary. Uh, Hamilton Junior High School, and then uh, Fresno High. So I'm a Fresno High warrior. Warrior. Oh, yeah. Class there of 66. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Varsity, too, by the way. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. He's yeah, not <laughs> Nice. Not to put an age on you, Kopi, but right. most people, when they hear, yeah. you know, the war or whatnot, yeah. I mean, even with Ukraine yeah. stuff now, but what year was that specifically? When we came to America? Yes. Well, we, I was, it was 1951. 1951. It was after, the, after World War II and then the Greek Civil War. So they, you know, those Greeks wanted to fight some more. So they got, <laughs> they got, they got a little angry amongst themselves, you know, different political parties, and they went to it. So, but uh, we left right when that was finishing, and uh, here we are. Seventy years here, huh? Yeah, that's a 70, long time. Uh, yeah. awesome. Did you like early on, you know, coming from uh, another place, yeah. coming here to Fresno, coming to America? Yeah, that's a movie. You should check it out. Let <laughs> me see. <laughs> How was it like? Did you use your humor as a mechanism to uh, kind of get the friends and to uh, associate with others, or were you shy and kind of withdrawn? Well, when you we first came, you know, obviously I, <clears throat> we didn't know English. Yes. You know, and my, my dad really never learned English. They, they went to night school to kind of, you know, improve. Uh, but, uh, yeah, at, once I got into school, uh, you know, like kindergarten and first grade, I kind of felt a little bit, you know, had fun, mm. you know. And I was able to learn the language growing up, you know. But when I went to kindergarten, it was real poor. The language was real bad. And then once I got into second, third grade, I picked it up quicker. But, uh, and I'm still working on it, to be honest with you. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's, we all have a personality of some kind. And mine was just a little wacky, a little crazy, mm. you know. And, uh, you know, I wasn't athletic. I wasn't, you know, the sm- the, let's put it this way. I wasn't the smartest uh, bulb in the, in the pack, mm. you know. So a little humor here and there, and we made it through, you know. 
And uh, I, as a matter of fact, in the sixth grade, we had a talent show at Fremont. And I auditioned to be the MC. Okay. You know, so I figured, you know, I've been joking around. People have been throwing up at my jokes. I can do it on stage. <laughs> so uh, I auditioned uh, with my Tony, uh, with my buddy, um, uh, t- Tony uh, uh, Holguin. And we, uh, he auditioned, I auditioned, and I got the part. Nice. And uh, that was the first part I got. When I think about it, not professionally, didn't get paid for it, but who cares? So I got to MC the show, the talent show. It all starts somewhere. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's got to start somewhere, absolutely. Yeah. And it was wonderful. And then I went on and uh, went to Fremont Elementary, took some you know, acting classes, did that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, I ran for vice president of the student body of Fremont, mm. I mean of uh, uh, Hamilton Junior High School. And my platform was very serious. Three-day school week, and I would clean all the bubble gum from underneath all the seats. Oh, the you were yeah, you were the man. <laughs> Bam! I, it was a landslide. It was a landslide. <laughs> so uh, bu- bubble gum, unfortunately, is still there. Mm, well, hey, you can't do it all. No, you can't. Can. Do it all. But anyway, so yeah. we are what we are, you know. Yeah. And go with it, because that's, awesome. that's we all have strengths, you know. Kopi, speaking about those strengths, I know you talked about your elementary, how you were as a child. Obviously, we do a lot of events with different youth, sure. right, adults. What was your educational background? I know briefly yeah, there was an event about 10 years ago. You were talking about your college experience sure, and what you sure. majored in. How did you major in broadcasting? What brought you to that? Well, um, I did theater, you know, in high school and stuff. And uh, I, I just, and then my, actually my first radio job, it wasn't professional. It was at the Veterans Hospital in Fresno. They had a, they had a radio station for the hospital. Wow. And they you just play music. So I, I went and did that. You know, I was going to City Fresno City College at the time. Awesome. And, uh, and I thought, well, let me try this, you know. So I tried it. It was fun. And then I transferred from Fresno City to L.A. City College. They had a complete broadcasting department with studios and stuff. And uh, I, I was there one semester. Finally got my grades up so I could transfer <laughs> to a, a four-year you. college. <laughs> but we won't go into that. <laughs> I had the same deal. You know, man, let me yeah. tell you, you know, I spent five years at Fresno, uh, five semesters at Fresno City. Then I figured, oh, okay, time to go. And uh, I got into L.A. City College, got, loved it. And then I went to L.A. State for two quarters. It was so-so. And finally, there's so much to learn. You know, mm. there's so many ca- colleges. You got to go to all of them. <laughs> then I went to San Francisco State and got my got my degree in communications. Excellent. And it was great. Excellent. And then and then uh, I was looking for work like everybody else. Once you finish, but uh, it, it just happened. You know what I mean? It was it it, it fit my personality and my intellect of uh, you know just being on radio with the humor and stuff. So it, there I am. The fact that you got to use your actual uh, graduated with, you know, yeah. kind of like your diploma and everything. It's it, you look at today's society. Most people who graduate with, you know, broadcasting yeah. and communications, they struggle. It's you know what? That's a good point. It is a struggle because uh, I have friends that I went to school with never got a job in the in the yeah. industry. Um, but I was very fortunate. I graduated in June. Uh, went to Greece for the first time another story and then uh, um, I heard about Channel 26 because mm. it was going on the air uh, October of uh, 71 and I went and applied you know yeah. and I got hired you know no experience no experience you know yeah. just, uh, just just being who I am you know no experience right. and they hired me they didn't uh, at that time it was a religious programming so uh, they had a production department three people myself Jim Myers and Danny McGuire great guys and um, uh, so I, you know, write and produce commercials. That's what we did. Yeah. You know, and then I started hosting Dialing for Dollars, an afternoon movie, and uh, did that for about three years. And then, uh, then I decided to go to Hollywood with my wife. You know, so it was. And then we, it was a quick trip, but not really <laughs> quick. You know, but uh, but uh, I was very fortunate to get a job because people are still looking because there's so many that want to get into the business, just like acting, man. Yeah. You know. Just like comedy, mm-hmm. you know. And then you got old heads like us who never want to leave. Yeah. Once we know. get in, so those spots yeah. never come open. So <laughs> That's right. Like- so, you know, so, um, you know, I wanted to uh, wanted to do it. And uh, it's uh, it's a chore. It's a challenge. And you're doing great, by the way. I got to admit, with mm-hmm. your humor and your comedy show and everything, yes. everything you're doing. So it's, oh, by the way, when I came back from Hollywood, uh, I emceed at the Old Athenian. I was uh, the MC. 
oh, for wow. a couple of years yes. because I was still looking for work. I produced commercials and stuff independently. Yes. So, uh, but yeah, I did that for a couple of years. Got all the comedians coming through. It was a blast. Nice. It was a blast. But um, so that's how it happened. I applied. I got the job. Did work there for six years, and then I told my wife, I said, you know, we, we'd been married a year, and she said, I told her, I said, you know, we really go to Hollywood. I just got to go, and, and she's okay, let's go. And she's, and she's moving. <laughs> what does she know? She's getting into Hollywood, yeah. glamour and all that stuff, but we uh, made it to Hollywood. We got down there. She got a job as a um, uh, working for Thrifty Drugs in management, drug stores, and, um, and I started taking acting classes and you know, just doing extra work and stuff like that. Yeah. And it, uh, one step after a time, you, uh, you know, it develops. And it takes time. But the big thing was, did I answer your question? Because I'm rambling. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes, you did. Absolutely. But so that's, uh, that was the move to Hollywood after six years in television. So I'd worked. I knew production and stuff. But, uh, and I did plays in college, you know, in elementary school and high school. And I was the MC of the sixth grade talent hey, class. Yeah, there you go. Free my elementary like. school right here in Fresno, <laughs> California. Yeah, but uh, yeah. So that was uh, that was the progression to the bi- to the big time. I think you and I both could, uh, for our, our viewers, could give them a little insight on the the Hollywood dream. Oh yeah. You know it's, you know it's so hit and miss. There'll be ups and downs. Be prepared for no. You're yeah. gonna hear that more than any other word you've ever heard in your life. Yeah. No, 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 no. But occasionally, you're here, yeah. yeah. And then that's a moment where you got to grab it, you got to seize it. Yeah. I know uh, we've talked about, you know, your Beverly Hills Cop moment yeah. and uh, other things that you've done. When was like a moment where that yes made you and your wife just really hug each other and go like, okay, this is a good one? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you mm-hmm. what, this is, it's... Um, when I was doing extra work, we'd been there about six months, mm-hmm. and you do extra work, so you kind of get to, you know, what's what's going on on the yeah, set, you know, too, you yeah. see what's happening. You have no lines, but you're extra, you know, you're in the crowd kind of thing, yeah. you know, and uh, don't wave at the camera as you go by, <laughs> man, you're going to miss your box lunch and your $18. Get out of here. Yeah, you're out. So, um, so there was a, a TV movie about Howard Hughes with Tommy Lee Jones, and it was just uh, The Amazing Howard Hughes. That was the title of it. And uh, there was a scene they were shooting in Pasadena uh, that his wife at that time uh, was going for divorce proceedings, you know. And there was a scene with her and a reporter going up the stairs, Pasadena, beautiful old courthouse, you know, with the columns and everything, going up the stairs and uh, for the divorce proceedings. And Charlie Ziarko, uh, the assistant director at the time, called me over and says, Cope, you're going to be an extra in this. I don't know why he picked me out of mm-hmm. hundreds of people, but thank God he did. So here's your notepad, you know, and you're just going to be writing down what they're saying. And I'm following along up the stairs. So it's time to do the first take, you know. So we all were down at the bottom of the stairs, the two main actors, uh, you know, schmucky little extra right here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, action. We're going up. They're doing their lines. We're coming up to the top. Well, this is the top, let's imagine. Coming up to the top, the camera's at the top with the crew shooting down. And, we, and, the, and then we're going to go by the camera, you know go on to the next scene. Well, I wrote down, why are you divorcing Howard Hughes? Don't you love him anymore? I'm an extra, but <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a line, but, you know, I'm, I'm into it. Yeah. You know, you got to, even as an extra, you yeah. can't just be looking around, you know, you right. know like that. Otherwise, you're going to miss out on the $18 and the box lunch. <laughs> right. So, so we're up going to the top. Before we made the curve off camera, I threw out the line, how I did it, why I did it, I have no idea. I said, so, why are you divorcing Howard Hughes? Don't you love him anymore? It's not in the script, yeah. right? We go by, <laughs> all of a sudden we hear, cut! Two seconds go by, it's the director. What do you mean he wasn't mic? Put a mic on him. He loved the line. Oh, I screamed, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, the director loved the line. So, wow. we did it again. Did it again. And uh, so they, they, they use the line. But in the meantime, I'm not in the Screen Actors Guild. Oh, that's they a problem. They can get fined. Yeah. They can get, you know, fined by the Guild. So Charlie Ziarko came over and says, you know, Cope, we can't use, uh, we, we can't do, we can't, you know, because we can't pay you or anything because it's not in the script. Yeah. And I said, Charlie, anything you can do to get me in? I mean, I've been, my wife and I have been here for six months. Man, this would be a big break. He says, okay, Cope. He went and talked to the producer, came back with the producer's card. He says, on this card is the producer's name, a time, and a date that he wants you to go to his office. And t- he wants to talk to you. 
like, okay. So the time came, uh, go over to Studio City, the old Radford Studios, and um, oh, uh, just a, a sideline. So I'm, he's on the third floor. So I get into the elevator, the door closes, whoops, it opens again. Mm. So here comes a guy with a ratty shorty shorts, you know, and just a dirty T-shirt and, and a senior citizen, a little old lady, giving into the elevator. I said, who is this guy? I looked over. It was Paul Newman uh-huh. wow. in the elevator. Wow. Wow. He came up and asked for No, he didn't ask for <laughs> <laughs> So what do you say to Paul Newman? Nothing. Yeah, don't, don't make a fool out of yourself. Then, then they, they got off on the second floor. But anyway, that was a sideline. It's like one of those things. Wow. You know? wow. And I remember it. You know how you remember things? You never forget the visuals. Mm. Oh, yeah. They're there. Those blue some eyes, wanna, those blue yeah, eyes are yeah. glaring at you. Some of those you want to forget, but that one you don't want to forget. <laughs> so anyway, I go into uh, the uh, producer's office. They had written a letter saying to the Screen Actors Guild saying, we have found an actor that looks like the character in the TV show, that was so-and-so, that was is willing to join the Screen Actors Guild to do the part. Willing, I'd give my little pinky. Are you serious? <laughs> so signed the paper, he turned it in. I got into the Screen Actors Guild, got a $172 scale for the day, mm. and that was how I got into the Guild because mm. it is so difficult because you got to have a part, and to have yeah. a part, you got to be in the Guild. You know, it's the old yeah, yeah. Yeah. routine. Mm. So I was, I was blessed. I was so fortunate. Why I opened my mouth, I know why I opened my That's my job, to open the <laughs> talk. And I opened it at the right time, and, so, and I'm on the credit. And I'm not on the credits because it was just let that one yeah. go. But I was I wrote a line, so I should have gotten writers credits too. Come to think about it, they, well, I, they owe I, you. I, I, they owe me writers credits for the line the director left. So anyway, that's how I got into the Screen Actors Guild. Amazing! It was that's awesome. Pure luck. Sure, if I hadn't opened my mouth, who knows how I would have gotten in? If I would have gotten in, you never know. Yeah. That's the other thing about Hollywood. Dude. There has to be some luck involved. There has yeah. to be, you know, he has to shine down yeah, on you mm-hmm. because the opportunities. Is everyone is there? Like you go to these auditions, you look around. There's like a hundred people who look similar to you, yep. mm-hmm. and they they have some. Most of them have more credits than yeah, you, sure. so it, it makes it yeah. that much difficult. So they have to see something like they saw they on like, you, yeah. and they just have to kind of pull you in. And that yeah. happened. It happened to me. So I'm glad to hear your story. So that's, that's how it happened. And but you're right. When you go for an audition, you walk in, whether it's a commercial or a theatrical, it's like, wait a minute. I didn't know I had th- three <laughs> brothers that looked like me or, yeah. you know, 20, 20 cousins that looked like me. The type. They type. Look it's for a, that it's type. all the time. Yeah. And then once you get, obviously the look is important and then you got to be able to deliver your line, you know, with some kind of feeling, you know, some, even if it's not what they're looking for, at least an attitude mm. of, of the care okay. of a character, you know, you know what I mean? Something that they can say, yeah, I think this guy could do it, you know. Yeah. It's a different reading we wanted, but he's got something there. And then, they, you know, so a lot of times what would happen, I'd go in and, and audition. Yeah, I nailed it. Didn't hear a word. Mm-hmm. Other times I'd walk in and i said, say, God, that was terrible. I'd, I'd had gotten the part before before I even got home to answer the phone. Wow, from the yeah. That's you amazing know. that happens, yeah. You never know. So you got to do the work to get there, and then you got to do something to stand out and cut through. Yeah, it's really, and it's so competitive. Like you said, there's so yeah. many, we all look alike. There's so many actors, you know. But, uh, but all those it. guys did the same work. They all got to that yeah, part. Yeah. yeah. But you figured out a way to we, yeah, stand out. Somehow. Somehow. Yeah. The other thing is um, there are no bit parts. One line, one scene, whatever. There are no bit parts because, and when people say that, he, he's a bit actor. You know? mm. that's, that's unfortunate because you go there, like my wife and I did, sacrificed, quit our jobs, had very little money to start over, you know, and you work hard, you get to a certain level to get that, you have worked and earned that line, whether it's one line or a scene or whatever, and you've earned that. You know what? Nobody gave it to you. You've Mm -hmm. earned it. So there's no bit part. Anybody that says that, a little bit, uh, you know, hey, no, I don't think so. And I I tell people work and the sacrifice behind it. Sacrifice. I hung drapes, I flew hot air balloons, I did telemarketing to pay the bills, Mm. you know? So you, there are sacrifices. So when they say it's just a bit part, yeah, a bit part, let me tell you what it took to get to that. There you go. Yes. There we go. I'm going to do the part. Yeah. 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 They talk you about know. Brad Pitt, how he's had a chicken suit on with yeah. a sign in the middle of the street mm-hmm. trying to get people to go by, you know, at this particular restaurant. It's Brad Pitt, one of the yeah. biggest actors of all time. But he said, I had to do that to pay for my acting lessons yeah. to become Brad Pitt. So it's Very like, true. what are yeah. you willing to sacrifice? How humble are you willing to become before mm. you can get the rewards of yeah. what's, what's to come, what is rightfully yours if you claim it. 
Yeah. It is rightfully your, you, you grab your position in life and then you work towards it. Yeah. Kopi, who gave you that can do attitude? We all know you as a Mr. Positive. You light up everyone's day, but you either got that from your father, your mother, or maybe yeah. both. You know what? I, I looked at my, my parents as immigrants, mm-hmm. you know, uh, no language, like many, like many come to America. Yes. You know, you don't see, although some are starting to go in the different direction, but that's beside the point. Um, you look at what the sacrifices they made. My, like I said, my dad, 44 years old, he came to America, not a kid. Mm. And then he didn't know the language, worked as a laborer. My mom worked at the, in the St. Agnes Hospital. Um, was very, she, she was a little better with the English. And what they accomplished in their lives, my dad, with he worked nine years. We, were, we lived out on Weber Avenue. They had housing for the um, uh, employees, you know, little bungalows, three by three, three together. The Hernandez family was next to us, and the Jones family, an African-American family, was on the third bungalow, and we were here. We didn't have hot water. We all used different, uh, we all used the same uh, facilities. And and I saw what they did, and my dad saved enough money as a laborer in nine years to buy his first house cash. Uh-huh. And when I saw that, and what he went through to get to that, you know, how hard he worked to buy his first house cash, I said, you know what, why not? After I saw what he did, you know, and not to say that it was a miracle or anything, but everybody does, a lot of people, you know, but that was our, that was my experience within my family, yeah. you know, and I said, why not, you know, and he went on and got a few rentals in the neighborhood, you know, and even coming that, at that age, mm. he didn't give up, you know, so if he didn't do it, I said, I mean, if he could do it, you know, I'm raised here basically, you know with all the education available to us, all, you know, opportunities, you know, so go for it. That's what I tell kids, you know, go for it. You know, get your education, figure out what you want, make sure you understand the pros and cons, and then go for it. Because if you don't, I'm 74 right now, and uh, I used, I was, yesterday I was 37. (laughs) (laughs) That's how it goes. I tell my students that every day. The the thing is, you know, 74, I can look back and I don't have the regrets. Because I could be sitting here saying, man, what would happen if I'd only tried? Mm-hmm. And it, it happened what Co- I wanted. Kopi, you've had a big support system. You, you know, know, your parents, your, your parents, wife. You know, of course, what well, was really funny, it was a funny joke. Uh, we, ninth grade, a career class with our counselors before you go on to high school, you know. And uh, so, and my parents, again, limited English. Mm. We go together <laughs> and we're talking about careers and education. And uh, so, uh, and I translate for my dad, especially, and my mom, well, you know, this is what we're saying. This. And uh, so the, uh, the, the, the counselor said, so what would you like to be? And uh, uh, he, he said, I said, well, I, I, I'd like to be an actor, you know. And my dad <laughs> looked at me and says, what? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't understand why I would want to do that. But I said, Dad, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. You calm down. But yeah, I remember it was like, he couldn't. Like, what? What, what? what is you that? Know, <laughs> what the heck do you want to do? But uh, he, and then after we moved and everything, you know, they, hey, that's what you want to do. Go for it. Yeah. You know? But uh, they had, so I had my support from yeah. my parents. And of course, my wife. Now, the wife. How'd you guys meet? How you two lovebirds? Because you've talked a little bit, but I want to oh. hear, we want to hear oh. in depth of how you guys met. Well, I was, uh, I had a corn stand on the corner. No, uh, <laughs> what, uh, what was, you know, I was working in Channel 26 and I moved back, you know, I've been working, living in Fresno at the beginning and then traveling to Visalia. The station was down here in Visalia. And um, so there was a dance in, Sa- in uh, Modesto. There's a large Greek contingent of, uh, of Greeks there in, in Modesto. And they have it every January. It's a, a dance, you know, mm. the Greek dance, you know, so, Hey, I t- told my cousin Sam, hey, Sam, why don't we go to Modesto and see what's up? Mm. You know, t- dance-wise, music-wise. Mm. So he says, okay, so we go. And, uh, you know, they, you got, they have dinner and everything, and they have live Greek music. It was Cretan music from the island of Crete. They brought the band over. You know, I mean, it's Beautiful. pretty nice. Mm. And um, so we dance and buy them and everything, you know, and get to know people. And uh, There was... Um, Elaine was there with her cousins. At the time, they lived in San Leandro. And... Uh, they came from San Leandro, you mm. know, other kids came from, uh, you know, uh, Sacramento because it's cultural thing, you know, yeah. 
So so I started dancing, all those Greek dances, you know, and, and I just met the, met, by, Elaine was with her cousins, and I was, hey, how you kids doing? Hi, my name is so-and-so. Yeah, you introduce yourself, and uh, you got to take the first step, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so we got to all know each other, and uh, we all dance and everything. Party's coming mm -hmm. over, you know, it's over like at midnight, you know, and I was going to Sac uh, 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 San Francisco for a club that I belonged to, um, and they had, we were having a meeting. So I was going to go to San Francisco, stay overnight in the city, and then have my meeting and then come back. Mm -hmm. And I told Elaine, yeah, I'm going to San Francisco. She says, well, uh, you know what? Uh, because I'd come with my cousin Sam, and he drove. And uh, uh, I, sa I said, uh, he said, she said, well, why don't you uh, let me give, take you a ride, you know, take you to, uh, we're in San Leandro, take you there, stay overnight at our house, and then you can go over to the city. What? I, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I said, okay. That was very nice of him. And um, so uh, it was, uh, that's how it happened. Uh, I'm in the back room there and then get up in the morning, you know, shave and get ready to go out. And um, her dad opens the door and, and uh, he says, hello, how are you? I'm fine, so-and-so. And I was getting ready. Close the door. She, he went to a lane. He says, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, oh, I met him at the dance. Says, well, he's ready to go get up and cooking, bre cooking breakfast or something. Oh. So she made breakfast and I hit the road. And um, so that was it. A few months later, there's another dance in Sacramento. Ah. Who's there? Elaine and her cousins. Hey. This right. time, uh, we knew each other. So we got to having uh, conversations and dancing and everything. And uh, we, you know, dance was over. I went home. And then... A couple of months later, she calls me, and she says, you know, uh, Johnny Mathis is coming to uh, Sac San Jose. Mm. A group of us are going to go. You want to come watch, uh, see Johnny Mathis? I said, yes, of course I would do. Um, so uh, we went. I stayed at her house. A group of us went to over, saw the show. We all came back. We had dinner and everything. Mm. And it was like about 15 of us, you know, friends and everything, all, you know, Male, female. Yeah. So we stayed overnight on the floor. A bunch of us slept on the floor in the living room. Wow. You know, it was that kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, just a lot of fun, fun family. And then left the next day, and and then I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I could just call her up. And so anyway, that's how it started, and here we are. You know what I heard in that story, Cole? What'd you hear? Your wife's a go getter. Yes. Okay, she <laughs> yeah. saw something that she liked, and well, she was like, you know what? He's got some potential. You know, yeah. and she kept it going because. The first time you stayed, yeah, like you didn't call the next day. No, like you went on with your life. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was like, yeah. and then she was like calling yeah. you, "Hey, yeah. you want to?" You know, so like, I, I give her a lot of credit yeah. for, like, especially in that day and age, because it oh, can yeah. be considered very forward for yeah. a woman to do that. Yeah, yeah. But she did it respectfully, you know, and she did it just kind of like in spite of. I, I tease my my partner on the radio, Greg, all the time yeah. because uh, he's getting married in October, and it was the same thing. His fiance. Yeah kind of reached out and grabbed him. Yeah. Sometimes, guys, we have to be grabbed, yeah. you know, in order for us to go, oh, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, know? we're not thinking marriage, you know, you're 22, yeah, 23. You're, you're, no, no, actually, I was 26 at the time. So you're yeah. thinking career, your career mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. what am I going to do with my life? Yeah. And then uh, something comes along, and if it gets in front of you enough times, yeah. after a while, you go, oh. You know, it just yeah. takes that wait, moment. It's wait right in front of you. Yeah, now, now, now I have to... Now return the pursuit yeah, yeah. because I see something that's valuable yeah. that someone else might see as valuable yeah. and it could be taken from me. Yeah. So I think that happens with a lot of guys. Yeah. You know? So anyway, and then, uh, you know, one thing after another, uh, a year later, a little more than a year later, we got married. We got engaged uh, on New Year's. And uh, everybody, the whole family came to my parents' house for the engagement wow. party, you know. Yeah, you got families. quick feet after a minute. <laughs> yes, you right. dragging them in. Plus, her, her dad, God rest his soul, wonderful man, Jim Piperis, uh, he had a Piper Smorgasburg in San Leandro, big Smorgasburg restaurant. Oh, and he made the greatest nice. cinnamon raisin bread. Oh, <laughs> nice. I, I said, you know, it, it's worth it now. Yeah. I, I mean, just, we're not leaving that on the table. No way. <laughs> but no. anyway. Great story. Awesome. And then That's we got awesome. married. That was wonderful. Kofi was playing hard to get. Who would have known, man? Yeah, That's just crazy. A, just a little bit, you know. <laughs> he, he was happy to be in the atmosphere, yeah. but you know, again, it didn't it didn't click yet, right. you know. Because I think sometimes, you know, subliminally, it's like uh, 
rejection always sits in, in the back of some people's minds. Oh, yeah. sure. I reach out with my hand be slapped, like, what are, yeah. you, what are you doing? We're, yeah. we're just friends here, yeah. you know? And then you go, oh, my bad, I saw something that wasn't. Yeah. But I think I, that's, I think you can learn from both sides of the fence here. You sure, absolutely. From a female and a guy perspective, yeah. and oh, a pursuer I've... and a pursuee. Yeah. It's a lot to take from that story, and I'm glad yeah. you shared it with us. And it was us. wonderful. And uh, we've been married 47 years. Yeah, you two wonderful kids. Goals. And, yeah, mm -hmm. it was wonderful. And a strong woman to tell you what's good for you. Yeah. That's right. You know, you're absolutely right. Absolutely <laughs> right. I'm blessed, you know. I tried to leave the house with ostrich boots today, and she told me no. Didn't work. <laughs> <Yeah. I> didn't <laughs> work. Oh. Kopi, I know that you've had uh, several positions to get to KMPH before you got there. There was one article I was reading about you, and it was in your, regarding weather. Yeah. And you're like, where am I? You're going to find a profession out there where you're wrong 25% of the time, yeah. and you still, you get, still a get a paycheck. Yeah. yeah. Can you like explain that a little bit? Yeah. Because for when I read that, I thought this was such a great moment, a teaching moment, if you yeah. will, because all of us are going to make mistakes. Everyone tries to be perfect. Yeah. When the day and age right now, when everybody wants to put that right filter on, be perfect. Without a doubt. Can you talk about your mindset of how you mess up and you don't let that really take over and control your life? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when you're, and, and, you, and you know the same, you're, you're on radio and you know, you're doing live stuff now all over the place. And, uh, uh, when you're on the air, you know, you just, sometimes you, you forget and you got to keep going, you know? So you just keep going. You, you kind of either make fun of it or just pretend it never happened, you know? So you just keep going, you just keep going. But thing is you keep it light and don't let it get to you because more than likely, you know, tomorrow, nobody's going to come up into you, up to you and Hey, Last night, mm. what the heck were you doing? <laughs> you were, were you not, you know, sleep? Were you sleeping or something? So it happens. It happens. But uh, when it comes to weather, it's it's not always perfect. You know, on the other hand, as, as a matter of fact, there was a forecast I was giving. Uh, we were expecting a system to move into California, and it was like from the Pacific. You know, it was going to like big one, mm -hmm. and it was going to dump rain, dump rain on us like crazy. So you know, you know the. Weather service had the alerts out and everything. And I get up that, it was it was on a Friday night, I get up Saturday morning, I hear birds chirping, and it's sunny. Mm -hmm. There's not a cloud in the sky. What happened? That system split as it was coming, uh, because an area of low pressure developed, it split, went north and south. And missed and, us. And mess, yeah. missed us. Mm. So I go, oh my gosh, unbelievable. So I went to, uh, I was going to Home Depot, I think, that morning to get some stuff. Guy comes up to me, hey, what happened to that storm? <laughs> so uh, I said, uh, that, you know, it's one of those things, you know. So the, when it comes to the forecast, it's, uh, it happens sometimes, but not that often, you know. And you just, you know, and that's the way it is. You, know, you try to explain it, but uh, that's the way it is. You know, the weather is not 100% perfect because it's flexible. You got highs and lows, shifting patterns and everything. But, uh, you know, and you just say, well, that's Mother Nature. You know? mm -hmm. That's Mother survive. Nature, right? It was somebody survive. messes up. That's Mother Nature right there. Yeah. <laughs> now, we've seen you, uh, you know, for years do the weather, and it seems as though sometimes they open the window up uh -huh. and the weather blows your hair off or something happens. How did that come into play? What does Kopi do, like, when he with the hair thing? How is, how is your how life? How did that happen? Yeah. How, how? What decisions do you make on a daily, and then how do you <clears> feel <throat> about it? You seem like you just, like, I'm, I'm going to do me. Yeah. You have colorful shirts. You yeah. have your own style. Yeah. The shoes. The shoes. the shoes. Like, when did this happen where Kopi was like, you know what? I'm gonna do me. I'm gonna develop this trend, and I'm just gonna. Because everyone loves it. It's yeah. just like, it, did it hit right away, or did it take time for people to get used to? Well, we'll start with the shoes. Okay. Okay. Um, first of all, you're looking at a cheap Greek here. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> um, uh, the shoes. I was looking for some tennis shoes. I mean, I wear them till the you know the only thing that's left are the shoestrings. Remember Copeland's mm -hmm. shoe uh, store on? I remember on, that on, yeah, on Blackstone. Blackstone yeah. I was going in to buy. I'd say, what do they? Let's see what they have. You know. Yeah. And um, you go to the counter. You know, to the area where they're there on the platform, and they have them sitting nice and pretty. You know, like this at an angle. You know. And I said, red shoes, man. These are ugly. Who is going to wear? Who's going to wear red shoes? Man, I picked it up and looked at it. Man. Hmm. <laughs> Nine ninety five. Where are you going? <laughs> you know, going. red's not a bad color. Yeah. <laughs> so I bought them, and I wore red shoes. And then, I, and then I, at work, I didn't wear them right away. But then one day, I, I forgot I was out doing a, a school visit or something, and I forgot my to bring my good shoes. You know, my mm -hmm. my whatever they were. 
And uh, so I wore them to work. Nobody said boo. Hey, nobody nice. said boo. I wore rich. I wore them again. Nobody said boo. I wore them again. Nobody said boo. So I've been wearing red shoes for, oh my goodness, uh, 25 years at least. Wow. Yeah. Wow. With a total investment of about $48. <laughs> well, no, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you, that's a good point. These were, these were uh, like I said, nine ninety nine, and I still think I overpaid. But anyway, that's an exact. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, then I started, getting, I started getting Nikes. Mm. And when I started getting the Nikes, uh, they would uh, embroider on the back. Whatever you wanted, you know, oh, so yeah, many custom. letters on each shoe. So I had Kopi, KMPH, mm, oh, yeah. on one and on the other. And then, uh, so every sh every pair of shoe that I would get, I would do it a little different. Okay. But so that's how the embroidery started on the red shoes, uh, on, on the shoes, uh, because Nike did that. They did that as a service. Okay. It was an extra until later. But anyway, so and then um, the Hawaiian shirts. I was a friend of ours, Tom Hyatt, Tom and Angie Hyatt, just wonderful people. Um, their daughter Ashley was like I think third grade or something, mm -hmm. uh, and he says, you know, did you go to her school and, and read a book or something? And she was going on to uh, uh, St. Mary's, and um, so I said, yeah, I'd never done that before. You know, Isn't that a, fulfilling? It was wonderful. Time, yeah. So I said, yeah, I'll go read a book. So I went to the class, and uh, I read the true story. I think the true story of the three little pigs or something. And I read that, and they loved it, you know. And, and all of a sudden, uh, Tom said, thank you. The kids loved it. Uh, and Tom's a great guy. And um, then I got a call from, from a teacher. He says, could you uh, come and read to my class? And all of a sudden, I'm uh, the word's out. Yeah. I'm reading, reading a book. So I, so I went there, and I went there, and I went there. And then what happened, I slowly developed a weather presentation without writing it, but just impromptu doing it every time. Mm. And I would add something else, something else. And then I started, you know, uh, the, the, the jet stream and all this, all this stuff. And I said, you know, first of all, I did lessons on, you know, um, you know if you can't read, you can't succeed, all that okay. stuff, you okay. know. Get an education, you know, all that stuff. Uh, uh, the element is, uh, you know, stay away from gangs and drugs, all that. So, uh, but I started the thing where I said, your head's the earth, you know, and then uh, you got the jet stream, it comes down, mm -hmm. it brings the, the, you know, the, the high, hot and cold temperatures and all that stuff. So here's the North Pole. The, your forehead is up in Alaska. Awesome. Here's the Golden Gate Bridge, oh. and here's Fresno, California. <laughs> you know, and then I, I use my head, and then so a whole developed the whole thing. And then I bring the kids up, and they do you know that stuff. You know, nice. line them up high and low pressure and all that stuff, and uh, and then it just developed into a thing that I would do at every uh, performance at a school with the kids, and that's how that started, and it was wonderful. And uh, I, I don't know how many schools I went to. But it was great. Then I got the 10-day forecast. We were talking about um, uh, one day, uh, actually, the, the uh, Great Day Faces. Mm. We, st we started about that we wanted to do more with that. So I said, why don't I just tape kids waving and smiling? You know? So they didn't know if the schools would allow it, but they did. So the, and I get wave and smile. And then I started, uh, you know, they should say something. And yeah. all of a sudden, I thought about the 10-day forecast. Yeah. And I said, and, and so we get one person to do, you know, uh, hi, we're the great students from blah, blah, blah. And all the kids will do the exclusive 10-day forecast. So that developed. And um, you know, we've been doing it. I don't do as much now because I've cut back, but uh, we've been doing it up until, the, up until COVID started. Well, yeah, yeah. At every school and everything. And people would watch and the kids would love it. So it had, you know what? It had two positive effects. The kids learned about weather, you know, yes. it, with my very simplistic explanation. But it was fun, and then uh, teachers loved it, and then the reading was wonderful, and uh, so they sold the stuff. Kids learned. They watched the show. So, uh, you know, the, they sold the segments, you know, the, the 10-day forecast yeah. sponsored by so-and-so, which I had never thought of, but they were able to do it. So it was a win-win situation for everybody, and people come up and say, you know, I remember when you came to my class, and uh, all mm -hmm. that stuff, you know, I had a wonderful time. Nice. And I now... I ended up going to teachers' classes that I went to their class when they were in elementary school. Wow. Oh, you know? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I'd go from Chowchilla, Delano, all the way up to Merced. Well, not just know? the kids. Everybody loves it. Yeah. Uh, you and I crossed paths in early 2020. I think it was January at a wedding uh, show. Yeah. 
and you did the exclusive, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know, about 120 adults behind yeah. you yeah. doing yeah. it at the same time. Yeah. 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 Everyone loves everybody. That. Everybody wanted to do it. It was great. And uh, so that's how that started. And then this up here started in a different way. Which way? Oh, you don't know. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. Hold I on remember this. Yeah. Yes. Um, we were having, uh, you know, they wanted me to do a segment. Uh, they had a um, uh, client, not a client, but a segment on uh, hair pieces okay. for the week. That was uh, during ratings, you know, and they wanted me to try different ones. Mm. Okay. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. So I was the guinea pig. So they'd try different ones, you know, and I, I'd go, I'd wear it for the day, and then go home, and and then after on the on the last day, you know, thanks for coming in. You know, we appreciate that people yeah. thanked him, and uh, you know, I had it on, and uh, I went home and left it on. So I went back to work on Monday. My people that didn't say anything. I said, oh, you still got it? Yeah. About two weeks go by. My new director comes <laughs> in and says, aren't you going to take it off? I said, no, I kind of like it. I kind of yeah, like it. Yeah, every, it's uh, it's uh, been uh, quite a few years now. There you go. And, for you. Yeah. Right. And uh, one of these days, you know, it'll, uh, it'll, it'll go. That's great. See you later. <laughs> but uh, As long but, as you like yeah, it. Yeah. You know? And then, of course, you yeah. know, the What's tie. up with this tie? Right? Yeah. yeah. I've been blessed with uh, the Kopi tie, and, uh, which I will treasure. Always oh. put a little golf theme on it for me. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so thank you on that. Yeah. I'm going to my, my exclusive collection. Oh, thank you. Exclusive? I've got a couple real good. It's like Steve Harvey gave me one, a few, uh, you know, and I got one from you. Oh, and, my God. Uh, yeah, so I put it in there with my next to my Michael Jordan suit. There you, you go. So, Jeez, am I a good company? Yeah, you're a great company. I'm putting you right in there. Oh, with man, you're, you're too kind. You're too kind. Well, well the Thai thing, they wanted to do a segment besides weather, you know? Mm. Because, yeah, so I came up with uh, if I wear a tie, and then people can vote on it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. there were other options, you know, but that's the one that we all agreed on, and that's how that came up. I imagine Kopi's uh, closet is like at the dry cleaners with just the racks of right, ties like, and, <laughs> and the Hawaiian okay. shirts. Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You know how many ties I have? I got no. You know those big buckets, the plastic buckets you buy at Home Depot and mm -hmm. everything? Yeah. I have six of those. Wow. And uh, I started counting. I, I got to 500, and then I said, I can't. Count. I'm done. Wow. <laughs> you know, because all these ties have been given to me. I mean, I have some, you know, obviously, right. yeah. that I had. But... People give me ties, you know. Uh, people retire. They don't need a tie anymore, you know. Uh, on the other hand, I've had ties given to me by widows. Their husbands passed away, mm. and they don't need them anymore. And just because they know I wear different ties, they, they gave them to me. Mm. And nice. people just give me ties. And I, 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 I stopped counting at 500. So uh, I have quite a few, quite a few. This is how he tries to get the number down. And this is yeah, yeah. going down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I got one now, one so down. I'm going to hold on to that. <laughs> So that, yeah, that's how the tie thing went. Nice. So, yeah. Kopi, what I love about you over the years is you're not afraid to take chances, take risks, and it's just see how it works out. And more than often, it does work out for you. Yeah. And for me and for us, you know, we really implement a lot of leadership when we go to schools, sure. when we do our personal and professional development. To me, you've always been a leader. And Thanks. even when you're signing autographs, taking pictures, one of your famous quotes that, Everyone will know if they ask you for an autograph, which are many, many people in Central California over the years and beyond. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Yeah. So can you unpack that a little bit? Just because a lot of our viewers, maybe they're hanging around the same types of people. Maybe they're hanging around people that will not take risks no. themselves. How, what do you mean by that quote over the years? Because you have been really profound in all of our lives here at this table oh, and our viewers. And so... There's something that you have, just not just with you, but your wife and your parents that you've talked about and the people that you surround yourself with every day, man. You're just so powerful. And we want our viewers to understand that it is really the people that you surround yourself with. Well, um, uh, you know, I go, go to the schools and I, I see kids in different, uh, different groups of kids, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering... You know, who do they hang out with? You know, what do they do at home? And uh, the phrase, uh, show me your friends, I figure, well, I look at my kids or, you know, other kids. And you, why are they that way? But why are these kids? And a lot of it had to do with associations. Who do you hang out with? Who teaches you good habits? Who teaches you bad habits? So the phrase itself was, you know, show me your friends 
uh, I'll show you your future. And uh, basically, if kids hang out with kids that, and uh, I, I hope my, my language is okay, but gangbangers, mm -hmm. you know, drug dealers, yeah. all that stuff, it, how, who are they going to hang out with? I mean, if they hang out with that, what do you think they're going to do? That's all they know. But if they hang out with other kids that do their homework, listen to their teachers, listen to their parents, you know, that's a, they've got a better foundation. Sometimes it's not those kids' faults either. Mm -hmm. You know, it may come from uh, within the family. Very true. You know, economic reasons. I mean, there are all reasons. There are many reasons. But if, if somehow we can have these kids understand that you're like this, you're doing these things because look at your company. Look who you're hanging out with. You're staying out till midnight. You're 14 mm. years old, you know, yeah. that kind of stuff. So that's, uh, so that's what I use. You know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And, I mean, and I have parents come up and say, you know, I was at the, at the, and parents would come to the classroom and watch too if they had time. And one parent said, you know, that phrase, show me your friends and I'll show you your future, affected my child, you know. Mm. And it helped him turn around. And kids come up that were marginal or, you know, and mention, hey, you came to my school and I'll never forget, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. So it did something. You know, that's great. Yeah. I'm that's one of those awesome. kids. You know, wow. I'm one of those kids, which is incredible to think about how fast time goes. You know, we were talking about that, Dre and Kopi, to start off this episode. But I remember vividly Kopi coming to Maple Creek Elementary School in Clovis Unified. And uh, I was working the after school program there and, and studying to be a professor one day. And then when I became a professor, I was working part time at Reedley College. Yeah. Kopi is always just open-minded, he's super humble and accepting. There's there's never like, oh, like talk to my manager. There's never, it's always like, if I have the time, I'll be there. And every invite that I've thrown at you, it's always been accepted and you bring it 100% copy every single day. So you're a motivation for myself in the classroom, for Dre on stage, for DJ Sal doing his thing in business and DJing multiple, you know, weddings across the valley. But I just want to thank you because you've really affected my life in that positive way and made me realize, look, like my, my friends, I wish them the best, but sometimes you got to let them go because I want to grow. Right? Yeah. And so um, thank you, you know, for that. And well, uh, just incredible, man. It's just, uh, just uh, you know, you don't think about it. Things just happen, you know. Well, my pleasure. It's, uh, we all do, we all, everybody can do good. Yes. You know, yes. That's all. No, I mean, with the, the leadership that we've been able to accomplish through Rise to It, we're looking forward to having that copy energy uh, for many, many years. I think you, you will. Know, continue uh, that. No so. doubt about it. Yeah. Do we want to hit them with these uh, these three questions? How you want to do this? Uh, let's do it. I Professor think it's time for the Rise to It lightning round. What about yeah. you guys? Let's do it. All right. So, Dre, do you want to go ahead and explain it? Uh, yeah, we got to have questions here. Three, oh. matter of fact, <laughs> each of us will hit you with three. You have to answer really quick. There's no long, long stories involved. Oh, yeah. Just off the top of the head, what do yeah. you think? And uh, you answer to the best of your ability. Then okay. you get from there, uh -huh. uh, we'll either giggle or we'll go, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> or throw a pie. Yeah. There we go, yeah. We got some pie. <laughs> okay. Uh, when did you realize it? And when I say it, and I'm in the same boat, you and I, we yeah. mirror each other yeah. in our careers. When did you realize that, well, you know what, this Hollywood thing may not work out. I uh, may have to go to plan B. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you, the, uh, the when it we'd been there 10 years. We were going to stay three years. Went there 10 years, and uh, up and down. You, you don't work every day as an yeah, actor, believe yeah. me. So uh, uh, we had our, our children were born there. We were there five years. We had our first child, and a couple of years later, we had our second child, Vasily, then our, our, our daughter, Anastasia, and then our son, Vasily. And uh, it was getting to be school-age time. Mm. And uh, we lived in Hollywood, nice place and everything, but you want to go to school there, this here, and the business, you know, it's like this. And you're wondering, can you raise your, afford to raise your family when you don't work every day, you know, to pursue your career? Set your priorities. Priorities end with the children and the family. So after 10 years, we moved back, and uh, that's, that, it was the kids. It, not, I'm not putting him down, but it was the right thing to do at that time. Same happened to me. Yeah. Same thing. No. Yeah, same thing. 
kids. Yep. You know. uh, secondly, you and I, uh, we tried to make this happen, and we just didn't connect at the last minute. Prince was in concert. Mm -hmm. You and I had talked. We was like, let's go to the show together yep. and hang out. And uh, we both went, yep. and I think I was running behind, and we didn't connect. No. It's got to happen. Okay, okay, we got to figure out the next big show that you and I are we're both, going because we, we're, we're yeah. both huge Prince fans. Yeah, and uh, we had talked about this, and but we got to make it happen. Limos on me. We're gonna go to dinner. Hey, uh, there we're we go. Have a good time. I'll and, be the driver. Well, no, you're gonna be in there, uh, and you and your beautiful wife. We all got to we got to find a happy meeting where we all can go and enjoy a night out. That's that's oh, on me. That's, that's got to happen. I appreciate that. That was question two. All right, you appreciate yes. that. That's yes. your answer. Okay, yes. that's a yes. Yes. Okay, and the last one is more of a, a thank you. Because because when I first uh, came to Fresno, I said, okay, I got to find somebody who, uh, I don't want to get emotional here, who can mentor. And you were the guy. Damn. Um, you came in uh, to my show in 2000 when you kicked off Great Day. Yeah. And we, we bonded. We yeah. talked. And um, I said to you, I said, man, I've been watching you. And you inspired me because you were work all the time, you're a happy uh, go-getter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, you know what? I want to be like that guy in this city. Mm -hmm. I want to make an impact, mm -hmm. and I want to have longevity. Mm -hmm. And thank you. Well, you're welcome. We got to get it. Hey, we got to get it. Go for our brother right here. And you're, 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 you've got a great career ahead of you. Thank your, you. Your dedication. First of all, your family. You're a good family man. Yes. Respect. And you have dedication, talent, energy, and... Just, uh, I mean, you're going for it, man. You're going Always for it. Always going for it. Going for and it. I, I thank you, man. Got me yeah. up here snotting all on camera. Gotcha. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, that's, uh, we'll, we'll block that yeah, out, there we right? Go. We'll <laughs> put a, a strip around my eye. Or... Put some sunglasses. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. But thank you, Kobe. You're you're thank you, that man. That makes a lot. DJ Sal, you're up next? Man, no, no, I'm just thinking longevity. You said, you know, that yeah. a lot of years in, that's not an easy thing to do. And you've been able to do it by being you and actually not acting. I think that's pretty yes. cool. So I've got the hard-hitting questions. I know people know, they think they know Kopi, but with my questions, they're really going to know who Kopi is. Mm. Are you ready for these? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not that deep. Where's the door? I'm not that deep. <laughs> no. I need your power ranking. Taco, pizza, euro. Mm. Mm. You know, uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think tough. I know that's just tough, because man. of the Greek yeah, heritage. Yeah, I'm, right? I'm going for you know, yeah, gyro, well, well, the gyro. Yeah, Kopi, what is your favorite position at the news station? Oh, you Anchor know, or weather? Um, <laughs> tough. Co-anchor and weather. <laughs> he's so, yeah. he's so he but make nobody he, upset. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's good with that. Yeah, he's very were, tactful. They, they were both good. They were very they tactical. Well. I, I can't say because they fulfill a need for the station. Two different ways. And when you're there, you're there. And you do the other one, you're there. And they're both equal. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Because you have a, a job to fill. You know, Got and, it. and do your best. Got it. So they're, they're both wonderful. And I'm blessed to have been able to do both. Awesome. So I make my living playing music uh -huh. for people. Yeah. That makes me happy. If I was doing an event where Kopi was at, yeah. what song are you coming to ask me to play for you? What's going to get Kopi off his seat and on his feet oh, on the dance floor? Uh, see how the, uh, the, okay, uh, Creedence. Creedence. Oh, damn. Oh. I'm thinking you might want to say the song you danced to with Elaine for that, that first dance or second dance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there were a lot of dances. Uh, there were a lot, yeah. of, dances. A lot of dances back. But there was one, there was the one dance where it was like, you went home, I'm picturing, well, this is probably 80s, but I'm Well, it was a, the thing like is, a it, was a, it was a Greek dance. Ah, uh, with a Greek band. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Gotcha. Um, actually, a surto. There you go. That's a song. <laughs> that's a song, and that's a dance. Go uh, Google that, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was that uh, it for the, the that, DJ no, Those are my questions. Okay, my okay, questions. we'll do that. All right. All right, Kobe, these are going to be a little bit faster. going to be a little bit faster. So, favorite actor, actress that you have worked with? Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, Bill Bixby, uh, Mary Tyler Moore. Was that it? That was it, yeah. That was yeah. it, yeah. There go. I yeah. mean, there's so many. Word. So many. Yeah. Lou Ferrigno, I mean, you know, Jack Nicholson. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, incredible. Hulk. I saw that scene. Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy, for yeah. sure. Yeah, there's so many. 
My mother's a big fan. And by the way, thank you so much. Kopi brought in like a dozen roses, some flowers for my mom because he was like, oh, I got to bring her something. So thank you so much for doing oh, that. But pleasure. she noticed some of the music artists that you dance to. So check this out. Doobie Brothers or Bee Gees? Mm. Bee Gees. Okay. All right. If you ha- had to eat at one restaurant, we're talking breakfast, lunch, and dinner yeah. every single day for the rest of your life, what would be that restaurant? Mm. Breakfast, lunch, yeah, dinner, breakfast, lunch. every single day. Here in Fresno? Let's do Central California. Yeah, Central it's a California. Bit more broad. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, in uh, Golden Ox Restaurant. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's in Bakersfield. Awesome. Baco, 661. What do you enjoy most about Central California? The people. Yeah, for sure. Kopi, you said this once at an event we had for my college students, so I'm going to ask you it here. Who's Kopi's celebrity crush? <laughs> Catherine McPhee. All right, all right, all right. All right. There we go. <laughs> on behalf of the team, Kopi, we want to just thank you not only just for joining us here on the podcast, but all of your work you do with youth and not just youth, everybody that you come in contact with, man. It is heartfelt, it is genuine, it is sincere. And I know retirement, we don't even want to talk about that. Hopefully, I mean, you do this for many, many, many more years, right? Well, and so our you. kids can, you know, see that Kopi and you could breathe life into them. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, my pleasure was mine. Thank He's you. He's the GOAT, man. They have these polls all the time. They put all the local celebrities up against each other, mm-hmm. and I'll be doing really good. I'll be climbing. Then mm. I see Kobe. I'll be like, oh, that's the end of my road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And sure enough, you're not, <laughs> who's ever going up against him, you're in it's trouble, a wrap. man. By He's, the way, one more thing. Goat. One more thing. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great there day. we go. Hey. Family, thank you so much for joining us on another episode of the Rise to It podcast. Two fingers spread. Try your best to stay positive. And as always, if you can rise to it, you can rise through it. We'll catch you later.